Well, I mentioned it last night on my YouTube channel with the community post, and I said I was going to talk about the newest video from Dogpack404, and the reason why it took me so long to actually get around to talking about it, I could have talked about it yesterday, but I was completely off the grid. It turns out, like, whenever some big, important fucking YouTube thing happens, it happens when I'm just completely off the grid, just trying to, I guess, play video games and just trying to uh, live my normal life instead of just constantly being surrounded by terrible news and information about content creators because that just that doesn't that doesn't do too well for the brain um we're here to talk about the newest video from talkback 404 and it's pretty bad considering some of the information that's there like all i had to really say about it was that like when i was watching the video last night i was talking with a couple of friends on my um, on our discord channel our discord server and as i was in the middle of watching this shit uh i actually got uh, a ping from uh, my friend Pedro again that I've mentioned in a couple videos now and there was apparently like a chat log there from Mr. Beast but then I saw it on uh, a tweet and apparently like the account that tweeted that was fake and I don't know how I don't know how it's fake I don't know why it's fake but apparently it's not actually from Mr. Beast it could potentially be true that Mr. Beast plans on trying to take down videos that use videos from his YouTube channel probably not I'm gonna go ahead and assume that that's not what's actually going to end up happening but it's insane how all this ended up happening because of Ava Tyson Ava Tyson was the actual start and the downfall of the Mr. Beast brand which is crazy as i was in the middle of watching this last night and trying to compartmentalize all this information that was being told to me i was like holy shit mr beast is literally just youtube's version of homelander <laughs> he just <laughs> he could just get away with doing whatever the fuck that he wants and just and just not even fucking care about it and another thing that i feel about mr beast as well and we'll get into that in a little bit is i feel like he has this massive savior complex and let's actually get into it and why i actually feel that way so the beginning of the video starts off with dog pack trying to give a little bit of information but it's not really that important and then the interview actually starts with jake weddle who was in previous videos before in the past he was actually a writer on the mr beast team and he goes through a lot of information that had happened during his time working on the Mr. Beast team. And I, actually, I'm going to go ahead and like just go ahead and just start out with it now and, and then get into the rest of the stuff later. But something that really stuck out with me was that Jake actually mentions how he would do all these good deeds and he would do that for like the good karma per se, right? Like he's playing fucking Fallout New Vegas and he's trying to get good, good karma. So he does all these good things like paying for people's cataract surgery and building these houses for poor people and building these wells in Africa for you know, people in Africa to have clean water. This is what I meant when I said that he probably has like this huge fucking savior complex because he's trying to do all these good things, which are genuinely good things. He is trying to actively trying to do good things, but it doesn't ever actually feel like he's trying to do these good things to try and be a good person and help people. It feels like that he's trying to do all this good things and all these good deeds for the simple fact of trying to make sure that if he's ever caught trying to do shady things behind the scenes, it doesn't matter and it, it's not as bad because look, look at all these other good things that he did for these people, right? Look at all the good things he did for the people that had cataracts and needed cataract surgery. Look at all the wells that he built in Africa and all this fucking bullshit. And this is what I meant by he has like the savior complex. He likes the attention that he gets from doing all these good deeds, but he also really likes all the good publicity that it gets him so that way it completely hides and deviates and, and, and deludes all of the fucking terrible shit that he's caught doing and the fact of the matter is is that it, it works like and that's the thing that actively really gets me so upset about it is that it works when people were on Twitter, we're actively trying to flame Mr. Beast for getting people their, their cataract surgery, right? Paying for the cataract surgery, building these wells in Africa. It pissed me off because, like, he was trying to do actual good things for the good of humanity and the good of society by doing all these good deeds. But it, what worked is that it completely hid all the terrible shit that he was doing behind the scenes, which we're going to get into now with Jake Weddle's story where he talks about one of the first situations in the beginning of the interview where when he was a writer on the team, uh, he went and acknowledged that with the minimum wage that he's being paid on Mr. Beast's team, he's not really making enough money to be able to financially support himself most of the time. If, if he was working on a TV show from back in the 90s, that he would be able to retire. That's 
how little money he's making now today. And he went and talked to Mr. Beast and co, uh, or maybe he wasn't specifically talking to Mr. Beast, but he was talking to the higher ups at Mr. Beast's company. And he wanted a little bit of a pay raise. And he also wanted another writer who was working at Mr. Beast's company, who was an older black gentleman with a child, right? And he was actually being paid less than Jake. And he thought, he thought it wasn't fair that he was being paid less than him. He thought that that wasn't fair at all. So he was like, I think uh, with accordance to, to also with the Writers Guild that they should be paid more for the job that they're doing. And then what ended up happening? They both got fired and were served a severance check, which was an insane thing to do because all they had to do was just decide whether or not they wanted to go ahead and pay him more, which, I mean, I, I, mean, I guess that's what happened, right? And they ended up firing the both of them. They didn't want to pay them more for whatever reason, right? So they fired the both of them. Uh, of course, maybe there's some other information that we don't know. Maybe they were acting a certain way behind the scenes and like that's why they were fired, but they couldn't have been because Jake also says that in public standings, he was always talking about Mr. Beast and the company in a very positive light. So he was allowed to come back on videos. Even though he wasn't on Mr. Beast's payroll anymore, he was still allowed to come back and work on videos for him so that's the beginning portion of the video but the rest of the video he pretty much you know how mr beast has those challenge videos where the person locks themselves in a room for like 24 hours or like 30 days and they're paid like 300 grand it turns out jake weddle was actually the first person that they tried this on and it went very very bad because he explains what happened to him during i think the 11 days that he was locked in that room and from the sounds of things it sounded like absolute torture and that's because it was so he was put into this room and you know i guess like in the in the like the prisoner uniform with like no shoes and anything and you can tell or at least he could tell uh, as, as well as everybody else there that the room had just been freshly painted and the reason why they could tell is because the paint fumes that were in the room completely suffocating them was still very much apparent so that's not good for the brain and body. In the room, there was also like a hot tub machine and an ice cream machine, which looked cool at first, you know, at first glance, but you know, obviously without a proper filtration system, the water in the hot tub is gonna smell pretty bad. So that's already one of your senses getting completely fucking destroyed. The thing with the ice cream machine is that it has either two modes and that's on and off. So he either leaves it on and has this blaring loud noise on at a constant all times, or he allows mildew to, to mold and he's further attacked from disgusting smells in that room along with the, the paint fumes and the dirty water from the unfiltrated hot tub. And uh, you combine all that along with the fact that the lights were always constantly on, even always constantly being recorded. He pretty much could never actually properly get to sleep. So he was always constantly sleep deprived, which if you didn't know, which I actually didn't know this before watching this video, that is an act of torture, sleep deprivation. And that is completely against the Geneva Conventions. And I thought it was insane, right? That, th that this was the, the type of working behavior that was happening with at least one person in accountants when they were working for Mr. Beast. You combine all that. Right, you combine all that with the little amount of sleep that he was getting, the pretty much no sun that he was getting at all, by the way, because he was just locked in a room in a facility. He was then woken up by Jimmy because, of course, Jimmy has to create content somehow and in some way. And he wakes him up and he's like, hey, dude, you're going to run a marathon. He told a guy who doesn't actively train to run marathons to go and run a marathon. And he had no shoes on, so he's just constantly running, running on his treadmill with no shoes on, and he's on there for hours. I forget how long he said he was on that treadmill running for, but he was on there for hours, and he got huge blisters on his feet, and his feet were bruised and bloody and battered, and it sounded absolutely fucking awful, right? Like, I, I wouldn't put my worst enemy through this. I, I don't understand how anyone could think that this is an absolute, like, good idea, and how people even find this type of content to be funny anyways. It, remi it reminds me of, like, how reality TV tries to do this all the time, and that's because that's what Jimmy is trying to do with his YouTube videos. He's not a content creator like, like me and some other people on the platform. He doesn't really make videos for people online anymore. He tries to make TV shows 
but he puts them on YouTube instead of instead of on actual TV. Like that's what he does. He, he's just trying to make TV shows, and he has the same work ethic and work behavior as actual TV shows, right? E- even down to allowing fucking PDF files to work on his team, which we'll get into a little bit. All this happens to to Jake Weddle, and he's beaten and bruised and battered. His feet are blistered up to hell. He's exhausted from deep sleep deprivation and he had no like no access to sunlight or anything just absolute terrible fucking behavior and his mental health was just like down in the gutters and jimmy goes and talks to him and he's trying to make sure that he's well and like like, this is something that jake actually points out and he's like oh well you know we want you to uh, we want to make sure that you're in good health so that you don't... St- and then he, like, cuts himself off from saying, like, potentially, like, sue. And that's the thing that he was most worried about, right? Like, like this was the fucking thing that they had programmed into his fucking head. Like, he's a goddamn AI. Worry about contestants' mental health while it's also not worrying about getting sued. Because why would you not want to sue him for this? Because, the, like, like yeah, even though he got paid, like, over a hundred grand for doing this, it, it the, the simple act of being tortured just simply it just does not, did not seem worth it. Some people are probably going to use the defense, well, like, oh, well, he could have left at any time, right? He could have left whenever he wanted. He didn't need to stay in there for all that time. He could have just taken whatever amount of money that he wanted and just gotten out of there. He didn't even have to stay a full day. And it turns out that they actually had this document for the producers that work over at Worst and Mr. Beast Productions and apparently no does not mean no meaning that the producers are going to have to do whatever they can in order to make sure that someone says yes even if they have to exploit the situation that they're currently in so not only was jake Weddle in a situation where he financially needed the money to be able to support himself and his student loans he wanted because he wasn't working for mr beast anymore to go off and do his own thing and do his own like business ventures so he needed the money to be able to jumpstart his own career and go do what he wanted to go do and apparently this is something that the producers over at Mr. Beast, Mr. Beast's company actually are taught to do. Where, for an example, if they go over and they need to film at like a Dollar Tree, for an example, and they go and they ask like the manager, like, hey, can we film here? Even if they say no, that they don't work here, uh, what you're supposed to do if you're one of the producers is that you're supposed to go and talk to the employees and see if any of them are fans or see if any other kids our fans and then try talking to the boss or the boss's boss and like DMing them on their social team. And basically you're supposed to exhaust all sorts of avenues to try to get someone to say yes before they finally say yes. And and instead of just doing the actual normal fucking thing and just going and asking a different dollar store no you have to go and pester and harass this one specific dollar tree and so they inevitably end up saying yes it's okay for them to film there which is insane fucking behavior to have because of course no doesn't mean no is something that a rapist would fucking say that's something that someone who would commit terrible acts against another human being would say which is terrible the rest of the video continues on Jake Weddle then talks about some other situations that happen, some more Mr. Beast videos. Dogback provides some more information in regards to uh, production, doing this, that, and the other, and yada, yada. Uh, like the fact that they went over to like a lake at a camp and they filmed a video there where they were doing like a lot of like destruction on a yacht uh, inside, inside of the lake. And one of the rules was that they were supposed to go and clean that up after they were done filming. And what ended up happening? They didn't clean it up at all. They just left it there and didn't do anything at all, which is fucked up. Dogback even contacts the camp themselves to see if they can get some more information and in an email they neither confirm nor deny any of the stuff that he would uh, that he had tried to ask which could mean a multitude of different things uh, they probably just didn't want to get in, in any sort of legal trouble f- from mr beast for trying to give dog back some sort of information uh, but they didn't deny anything so whatever potentially happened could potentially have been true but the last thing and obviously i would say the biggest thing is the fact that there was a guy on Mr. Beast's payroll who was featured in a lot of videos who worked as a manager for Mr. Beast's company. He was on the sex offender registry. Somehow, I don't know how, because the bare minimum of what you're supposed to do when you have a company is that you're supposed to do background checks on someone before you hire them onto your fucking team is you're supposed to see whether or not they have a criminal record. And the thing that would have came up if they were hiring this person is they would have saw that he was on the sex offender registry. And because Mr. Beast owns the company, he would be one of the first people to know about it. So there's no way that Mr. Beast didn't know about this. That There's no way that he didn't know that 
someone on the sex offender registry was working for them. Who I don't know how long he was potentially working for Mr. Beast, but the fact that he was even on Mr. Beast's payroll to begin with, and potentially maybe hiding this information, because he also, Dogpack actually also shows a recorded phone call, where the person, by the way, is called Delaware. Uh, if you're wondering why he's called Delaware, it's because he's not back in the state of Delaware anymore, which imp imply that however way you want to, where he, he's seemingly trying to pay whoever to get Delaware off of the registry. So Mr. Beast potentially, allegedly, of course, the, we, we don't know whether or not all this is true or not, was trying to get this person off of the registry to continue to keep hiding the fact that they had a predator working for Mr. Beast's company, which is absolutely insane behavior and I'm appalled. Apparently people also found on Twitter that he was the brother-in-law for Jake the Viking. All right, uh, editor Kira here, and I just wanted to go ahead and interject and show you the tweet that Jake the Viking has since made since this accusation has come out against his brother-in-law, and he confirms that his brother-in-law was known for being on the sex offender registry and that Jimmy or Mr. Beast actually knew about this information. And this happened back in 2010. He was hired in 2017, 2018. The main thing I really have to say about this mainly is the fact that regardless of who he is now and whether or not he was wrongly accused by this supposed 16 year old girl of SA, that doesn't excuse the fact that he still shouldn't have been hired in such a high managerial position to begin with for Mr. Beast because of the fact that he was on the registry. The fact that this happened to begin with is unacceptable. I don't accept that this was something that should have happened. I don't think Jimmy should have hired this guy to be on his team, and I don't think I'll ever actually understand why he decided to go ahead and decided to hire someone who was on the sex offender registry, because all that's going to do is just make him l look bad for his business, and that's ultimately what ended up happening. This information ended up coming out years later after he had already stopped working for Mr. Beast, and now this just makes him look bad for his business. So why Mr. Beast decided to get, go ahead and hire him to be on to his team, and I, I, I don't know. I, I think it's really dumb and really weird. Anyways, back to the video. Uh, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to go over the video. Mr. Beast, if, if all this is true, right? If all this is true, you not only have very, very shady business practices in terms of the fake giveaways, but you also have very shitty business practices when it comes to actually filming videos and the treatment of the people that are actually participating in these challenges for your videos. So that's awful. Some people in your work team and you're in your team on the people who work for you, you need to go and do some sort of investigation investigation on them to see whether or not they're actually on the fucking registry or not because who knows how many more are working for you i'm appalled and i'm disgusted i can't believe that this is this was allowed to go on for so long he needed to respond to all this last week but he needs to respond to this now and apparently dogpack also also mentions at the beginning of this video that he was sitting on a response to the first video that he had made so we're probably gonna get a response from Mr. Beast in the future, which I'm gonna have to obviously talk about. My voice is shot. Um, I've had to record and talk a lot about the situation that just disgusts me, and I'm gonna go and rest up my, my voice so that way I can actually properly talk in the next video, whenever that is. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Yeah, Mr. Beast, the homelander of YouTube. I don't think that's inaccurate to say. Uh, from all this from all this information that we have of him. So uh, yeah, my voice is killing me uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. If you liked the video, please please be sure to leave a like if you want to see more Please be sure to subscribe turn on bell notifications so you don't miss another video. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace Let the